recording and welcome again. Thank you very much for joining us all for this meeting again of uh, Still in Touch with friends. And this mm -hmm. evening we're going to have a very nice uh, conversation and have a guest uh, appearance of uh, top referee Susanna, uh, who will join us for this uh, presentation. And uh, we'll see some videos and a very, very interesting topics to talk about. So it's all yours, Sandy. Okay, uh, well, can, can I reiterate what you have just said? So th thank you, Susanna. Oh, just for, uh, just one, one thing more. I, I promised somebody, he sends his best regards, especially to you, Sandy and Susanna. Nati Tarom has asked me in person, just before we start, to send his the best regards to you, Sandy, the kisses to Susanna, and the check for me. So it's up to you now. <laughs> um, what is wrong? Kisses for me too? No, no kisses for me? Uh, <laughs> I'll ask him for next time. <laughs> okay, right. Anyway, so it's great to have Susanna on board. I've worked with Susanna uh, many times before, and uh, it's a, it's an honour to have you have you with us, Susanna. So uh, I, I hope that tonight is going to be as enjoyable for you as it is for the people listening. So. Oh, thank you for this invitation. It's a big, great uh, pleasure for me to be here. Um, okay, let's see if I can help you with this. Uh, I will involve you fairly early, so, so be prepared. Um, <laughs> okay. now, for, first of all, uh, the, 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 the topic that, that we are discussing this evening is called From Good to Excellent. Now, a, a lot of referees are good referees, but to take the next step up from that level to make you something special uh that that's that's not so easy to define it, it's it's what i call there the it factor something you, you can't really define um you can try and we're going to try and do that tonight uh, and some of the things that we talk about tonight are things that they don't tell you in referees courses because uh we don't have time to do it we they tend to focus very much on rules and regulations and and mechanics and so on um but what i would also say is that the uh, the slides that are going to be shown this evening if you're going to use them they could be used um, uh, to make a series of lessons, if you like. Uh, each slide itself could be expanded, and, and we don't really have time to do that tonight. We're going to skim the surface of, of this, but uh, feel free to, to, to use them and, and to expand on them and make them into lessons for your younger referees. Uh, Roy told us uh, recently in, in, in some of our conversations that we tend not to include the younger referees, but we should do that because they are our future. So anyway, moving on. Um, in our previous broadcast talk, we explored some of those factors that every good referee should be able to demonstrate. But this talk is going to take us um, a few of them anyway, a few of those topics, a few of those ideas and philosophies, etc., uh, to make you from a good referee into an excellent category of referee. Now at this point I'm going to bring in Susanna. Okay. Um, now Susanna as an experienced, a really experienced referee, refereeing at the top level, Olympic Games, VNL finals, world championships and so on. Can you tell me or tell us uh, something that you do differently now uh, compared to what you did when you were a younger beginning referee? Anything that you would like to share with us that you do differently now that makes you the excellent referee as opposed to an average or good referee? Um, well, I don't know if I'm an excellent referee, but for sure uh, I changed yes, many things. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I changed many things. You know, I, I started very, very young and obviously I was not prepared for the refereeing or personally and I had to learn and mature very quickly. Uh, but it's true that uh, from this girl who took out the cars very quickly and showed many cars in a match, I think there is nothing left. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> I was learning to manage uh, the game in a different way without panicking calmly, with some breaths uh, that made me lower my heart rate um, during the game. And I suppose that the experience, the knowledge of the rules and their interpretation during the game, um, of course, everything I have been able to learn from my colleagues and my coaches 
uh, had me or permit me to grow step by step. Um, I guess uh, also trusting myself, uh, trust that I can do the things that I'm doing, uh, help me too, I mean, to, to be more confident. Um, but um, above all these things, I think that um, there are two things, important things for me. First, I'm a strong believer in a thing work, so this is important. And uh, for sure, it still is my passion, so this is easier. Ah, good, good, good. Right, so we're going to pick up on passion later, if, if you don't mind. So let's, let's okay. look, first of all, at, at this slide here, which talks a little bit about the importance of rules and procedures and mechanics. Now, basically, this is what all referees, every single referee should be able to, to, to be able to demonstrate that good referees make the right calls. They whistle the right things, but that doesn't stop them getting into trouble. Uh, good referees can uh, do, well, they, they may need something extra to be that, that, that referee who doesn't get protested, who doesn't get challenged. Uh, a good referee to go beyond that needs to have a good common sense to understand natural justice. You know, it's not just about rules, it's about understanding the art of refereeing. And I'm sure Susanna will, will maybe come back and talk to us about the art of refereeing later. Right. All these things are very important, but that's not where it ends. Uh, on the next slide, I'm, I'm going to try and show you some of the, the other things that uh, maybe impact on the way that a referee goes from one, one position, one level to the next level. So, um, I, I, I put together them, and, and funnily enough, what Susanna just said appears right at the top. Passion. Passion for refereeing. Passion for the sport. Okay? And I, I don't know if that, if that was accidental or whether, whether you, you knew what I was going to say, Susanna, but that's really important. Um, competition instinct. Uh, another way of saying that is you understand the game. You understand... The, the flow of the game and the, the feelings of the players, the feelings of the coaches and what the spectators need, etc. Uh, you've got situation management, dealing with certain things on the court, things that happen, how do you deal with them uh, and so on. Investment, okay, investment in what? Investment in time, investment in uh, learning, investment in studies, investment in going everywhere and doing all the matches you can possibly do as a young referee. People skills, you know, how do you deal with the people? Because this is a people game, you, you have to know how to deal with them. And you have command, you have to be in command. And last time that we spoke, that ability to command, the command trust, the command respect, and what they say is what you do. You know, what they whistle, you accept with no problem. Okay, so Roy, next slide. So let's, let's look at a couple of those things. Um, so passion, first of all, uh, I've already said, you need to be passionate about refereeing. And you, you need to be see, that, see that passion in your partner as well. I'm sure, I, I, I don't think it, it's, it's overstating it, but Susanna, if you had a second referee, who really wasn't as passionate as you or as, as committed to doing the job as well as you, would you be upset? <laughs> well, it's, it's not a question to be upset or not, but of course, uh, when you notice that the, the, your teammate is really passionate about the, the referring activity, uh, let's say that you are a little more calmly, you know, you know that probably he or she is a little more prepared he or she uh, really knows the, the rules and how to, to apply on the game. So it's, it's help, it's help for sure, it helps, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but also in the discussions that you have with colleague referees, you know, perhaps as a younger referee, you were in the company of more experienced referees. You know, how, how did you acquire the knowledge and experience that you needed to take that next step up? Oh, it's a good question. <laughs> and, you know, knowledge is, if you get it, uh, study the, the rules, the guidelines, uh, but also listening to your colleagues. Uh, sometimes when you are involved in a game and you have the impression to, to commit a mistake in some actions, 
but from outside, the, 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 the view of the game or the interpretation of the games from, from other people sitting outside is completely different. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it's important also to be uh, quite autocritical. Uh, I'm sometimes too strict with myself, but this gives me the chance to improve. Um, of course, it's five minutes after the game, of 10 minutes, not all day uh, thinking about the, <laughs> the game but uh, permit me, allows me to, to, to improve step by step and after each game, for sure. Yeah. Um, of course, you can know everything, but uh, the perfection doesn't exist. So uh, every time you can improve in something, sorry, mm -hmm. but this yeah. is my opinion now. Yeah, no, I, I think, we, I think we, we can all learn from what you just said there. Uh, and it's, it's important that we learn the important things not the negative things. You know, some some of our colleagues, you know, yeah. at, at whatever level, they're very negative about things. They don't like Coach X. They don't like Team Y. They don't like this. Don't like that. But if if a young referee learns the important things uh, and be positive about things, uh, yeah. then 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 that's an important uh, philosophy to to maintain and to keep that to keep your passion, as you yeah. said. Okay, Roy, can you go to the next slide? Now, competition instinct may, may, may not be a, a phrase or a description that you recognize, but basically it's, it's understanding, smelling the game. You mentioned Natty Tarom earlier, and Natty was, was, was always somebody who talks about your ability to smell the game. You, you, you could detect the flow of the game, the tone of the game, the way that people responded. And you were the, you were the person who... Uh, got the tough matches because you had that instinct instinct to actually understand how the game was going and were therefore able to make the decision when the soft decision was the better way forwards okay a lot depend upon the tone right so and and if you were ambitious and you didn't quite get that top nomination that rejection really didn't um, impact you, except to maybe say, okay, I'm going to do better next time. I'm going to be the guy or the girl who actually gets that nomination next time. Okay. So, Susanna, back to you again. How does it feel? Sorry, Sandy, I cannot hear you. Still gone? Can you hear? Uh, no, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, now, the question I was going to ask was, how does it feel when you get that top nomination and uh, how do you prepare for that top nomination? Well, uh, it's, it's nomination for me, it's important. It's, each game is important. Uh, of course, when you receive a top nomination, it's even more important because you know that the, uh, it's a tough game, Two teams want, uh, want uh, to win, but only one can do it. But nevertheless, it's important for them. So they are expecting from you the best. Um, you know that uh, maybe a little mistake can, can be <laughs> a catastrophe in that moment. Uh, so for, for me, it's important to know the teams, to know how they are playing. If I have no this information because I don't know the players, I try to, to find some videos on YouTube, maybe. Because now with the new technology, you can find many things on the internet. So it's easier to know the teams, the coaches, the players, uh, the position on, on the court, the, the tacticals, uh, the, the, what they are doing. Um, after that, of course, uh, I, I need to know if I'm the first, the second, or the challenge. And uh, I like to, to read again the, the responsibilities of each role. And um, before the game, uh, also I have to, to make some special preparation. Um, let's say that I'm listening to some music, uh, active music, no classical music, active. But at the same time, I'm doing some, some uh, breathing exercises uh, to try to control my nerves and uh, <laughs> my anxiety. But of course, to be ready for the games. And at the same time, at the same time, I try to do some visualization of the players and uh, how they are, uh, they can commit some mistake concerning my responsibilities uh, in that game. 
So there are so many things that I can do it. And it, I, I try to do the same procedure each, each time, I mean, yeah. But you know, there are so many different methods to, to be prepared for the games. Uh, this is my method, but it's not the only one. Maybe for other referees, they prefer to go uh, to walk around the hotel or to read a book uh, before the game. So it's, it's depend on, depend on, yeah. Good, good, good. Thank you. Um, right, Roy, can we go to the next slide? Talk about command. Um, it, I'm sure that Susanna doesn't just look at games and teams. I'm sure Susanna maybe looks at other sports too and sees how the referees in those other sports behave because they have techniques that perhaps we can steal from and use in our own game. Um, we look at how they take command of a situation or, or, or take command of, a, um, of an entire game. They're the generals, they're the conductors, they're the people who make things happen. Okay, and that's how they gain respect. Um, if you have command, then you are the decision maker. So when there's a close call on the line, it's the re first referee who makes the decision, not the line judge. I'm sure that Susanna would, would back, back up that, that particular idea. But you have other members to support you in that, but you make the final decision. As, as a former US president once said, the buck stops here. You know, that's, that's where, where the, the, the final decision uh, is made. So having command counts and you have to show you're in control and people have to believe you're in control. But how do you actually demonstrate that you're in control? So Susanna, how do you demonstrate as a top referee that you have control without, without appearing to be a control freak? Uh, you know, I feel that, that um, there are some different elements. Uh, of course, it's a question of your personality. Uh, it's one of us has a different style to show in the game how we can control the game. Uh, but also the body language. If you show to the others that you are calm and everything is under control, for sure it's much easier that they can trust you. Uh, the knowledge of, of the rules, it's inside you. Nobody can see, but when you whistle, you are applying the rules. So they know that you know the rules in that moment also. But um, as I said before, uh, you know, I'm a strong believer of the teamwork. We are not alone on the game. So if you are first or second, you have also line judges, you have also a scorer, assistant scorer, of, and of, of course in top, in top competition, we have the chance referee also. And we are a team, we are all together working. And the teams are, are, notice, are, are noticing when, when you are looking the line judges and you are smiling to them or not. Uh, if you are so furious or so, uh, you know, uh, serious during the game, Maybe they think that you are nervous on the game. You have to be really calm. The, this is the, the famous poker face that we already listen many times in, in many talks, you know? And, and this is important, I think so. But especially, you must do all these things, but with your own personality. We are not robots, we are human, you know? And this is, this is important, to show your style on the, on the court also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, one of the things that, that I always felt was that if you looked behind the eyes of a top level referee in whatever sport it was in the eyes not into the eyes but see what's going on in their head first of all they looked at the right places at the right time um they're focused they're alert they're confident in what they're doing you mentioned that before um they're tough when they need to be but they can be approached and not feel nervous would that be a fair comment susanna yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. feel nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. And, and uh, I'm sure there's also situations where referees get it wrong. How important is it for the referee to admit that they're wrong? Or is, is that something that takes away from this command? Yeah, if, if you admit me, uh, uh, Sandy, of course, we are human and, and we will commit mistakes in every game. We are not perfect. We are not robots. We are not machines. Mm. But we, we need to try to commit uh, less mistake, uh, minimum mistake in each game. And of course, if we, if we commit a mistake, and in that moment we couldn't, we couldn't notice, we couldn't realize that, that there was a mistake in, in, in that particular moment of the game, put it on your back 
and continue, if you are thinking in this mistake, you lose completely the concentration. You are not focused on the game, and then maybe a new mistake is coming. <laughs> so yeah, try to avoid it, yeah? Yeah, this is true. But if, if, if you have understood that you've made a mistake, if you know you've made a mistake, and you think, oh, I got that one wrong, do you stand on the mistake, or do you say, hey, guys, sorry, replay? Of course. We can, we can replay the action if you are completely sure and you recognize the mistake in that moment, for okay. sure. Yeah. Uh, but, but having done that, the referee who does that doesn't lose authority by doing so. No, totally, totally the opposite. I think when you, commit, uh, you realize that you commit a mistake and you do this replay action, I think that the, the, the teams, the, the, the coaches, the players know that you are human and it's really much, much fair to recognize the mistake that continue with this mistake, right? right. Okay. Yeah. Roy, can we move to the next slide and we'll maybe see something? So here, uh, Susanna, if you can talk us through this, this particular sequence of play. Uh, Vlad uh, Simonovic is uh, the first referee and there's a challenge going to come in. So if you talk us through, what, we should, what should we be looking for here? Let's see. Uh -huh. They are requesting a challenge. They think that the players uh, who was spiking finally touched the ball, I think. They request for antenna fall. Okay, let's see. <laughs> it's clear that the ball touched the attacker. Even their request for antenna touch, but we saw another fold. It's fold, so we must apply this. Right now, my my question is, what what should we look at in Vlad's uh, body language, his facial expression, for example? Is there is there anything that that marks him, therefore, as a, a, an excellent referee rather than somebody who's, you know? Let me check the face of Blado. It's really calm. Probably it's speaking with the challenge referee in order to check this action carefully. And try to say to the coach, please keep your position out. Yeah, yeah. But wait a moment. We have to look at the big screen and then I will take the final decision, yeah. right? Yeah, you, you, you spotted what I was hoping you would spot, the fact is that he, he's communicating well mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he's, making, he's making sure that the coach knows that, he, that he's in, in charge. Exactly. And there's, there's no facial uh, anxiety at all. He is very calm, controlled. Like you said before, he's got the poker face. He's got the perfect poker face, in fact. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is no doubt at all that whatever happens, he's the guy who's going to make the decision and not the coach, not the teams, and not anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. So really, that's what I was trying to, to point out in, in such a video. In fact, the videos that, that follow, uh, I'm going to ask you to, to comment on them and, and say, what is it that makes them excellent examples and what is it that, that, that the referees are doing are they anticipating are they looking at the right places and so on so uh roy can we go to the next slide and we'll see so uh before we get to the next videos let's talk about people skills uh, and a lot of referees um they, they, they do things because they've been told to do things but they don't actually have that essential charm if you like uh, that instinct to look at the right place at the right time or the body language looks nervous sometimes and so on. Uh, and, and I wrote down in the second line there, referees need to walk the walk as well as talk the talk. A lot of people, a lot of people simply uh, have read the rules and they know, well, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do, you know, but the signals don't have meaning. They don't have any purpose. They do it because they've been told to do it. Whereas a natural referee would actually be doing it because this is my communication method. Would that, would that make sense? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think this is like uh, when, you, when you are learning to ride a horse. Mm. Uh, of course, you, you need some techniques and you, you need to, to have some uh, instinct or talent with the horses, you know, also. It's, it's the same here. Uh, for me, for example, in my, in my personal experience, uh, I was a player and also I, I did two, two coaches uh, courses. 
So this gave me also the opportunity to, to understand the feeling from the point of view of the coaches and of course, because I was a player from the players. So that gives me a general impression of, of this sport, not only as a referee, but in, in all the roles. And maybe because of that, I can understand the gain and the action and the reaction of the players and coaches better and better, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you don't have this kind of skills because you didn't play or you didn't coach, maybe it's a little more difficult. So in this case, it's better to go watch more, more uh, matches not only because you have to, to refer uh, a particular match, but also from outside to watch how are doing the, the, the job your colleagues. And, and it's important also for that. But for sure, this is something that you have or not have. If you don't have, uh, it's more difficult to apply the rules for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the bottom of the, that, that slide I've written down, this is the new era of refereeing. It's not the old way. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how you think refereeing has changed over the maybe let's say the last 10 years or so Oof, a lot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> many tell things <laughs> many us. things well what have uh, we done for example uh you know from from the past maybe we are more like a statue so we are we couldn't move uh, so so too much when uh, when we were in the platform uh, now we are more natural, where you can see more often the expression on our face, a little smile, not laughing, but a little smile in some moments, and uh, uh, you can speak a little bit more with maybe with the, the participant of the games. It's, it's, let's say, more natural, the approaching uh, to, to the, the way to approach to the teams, players, coaches, I think it's more natural. When you have to stop them, you need to, to, to do it and you, you do it. But uh, let's say it's, it's, it's much easier. Of course, the new technologies uh, appear in our sport and we have to, to adapt to the new technologies. These new technologies is, is, uh, are not our enemy. They help us to, to control the game in a better way, to take the final decision, to be more fair, let's say. So it's, it's, you have to adapt, you have to be flexible to all this kind of, of new situation. You cannot be a straight, oh, I know this because the rules say it should be like this and I'm focused only on this. No, you have to, to really uh, have a peripheral view of all these new technologies and new rules that we have, uh, new modification and everything. You have to be flexible for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, that takes us to the next slide, Roy. So uh, it's an interesting that Susanna has actually picked up on, on that because now we come to situation management. And this is, this is where you need to rise above the pressure situation and maybe even rise above the, uh, the strict application of the rules. Uh, and you, you have to apply common sense. This, this, is, this is where we have... We, we can teach you what's in, what's in the rule text, we can teach you what's in the referee guidelines, we can teach you what's in the case book, but we can't teach you how to apply it in a real situation when you're under pressure. And that's where you, uh, you, you, you actually earn your, your sergeant stripes as a, as a top level referee. Not just doing things because you've been told to do it, but because um, you are actually understanding the players, you're understanding the game, just like Susanna said a moment or two ago. Um, in unusual situations, you have to make that, that learn to do that if you want to be a top level referee. And in terms of handling arguments, well, we, in, in the video we saw before with Vlad, uh, you, you saw the beginnings of a I'll say an acting course by the coach. Okay, I'll say no more than that. So he, he, he does tend to attract attention in that particular way, but that didn't have any influence on Vladimir at all. Uh, and basically he was intent on defusing the situation before it erupted and became a, a bad thing. And many referees at the top level can do that. They recognize this is where there's going to be a, an issue. Let's deal with it now before the captain approaches and before we have a protest from the coach and before we have a challenge situation, you know. So uh, I've written down that that's all about anticipating. So Susanna, are you, are you somebody who anticipates 
action like that and tries to get around it before it happens. I try. <laughs> I try for sure. And I remember uh, one time one coach uh, during one of our meetings said to us, don't create problems where there is no problems, there are no problems. So uh, anticipation really, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, really essential in our sport today. And especially because you said, sometimes the coaches want to be the protagonists of the, of the games, but they are not. Uh, I mean, the players are the protagonists. So they give them the chance to uh, finish in the actions. And, and okay, we have to control somehow this. And we know which, which uh, coaches can do that or not. And we have to be ready for everything. Right, be aware. You, you always say be aware. So it's, it's true. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Right, Roy, next slide. And we'll talk about investment. Now, investment in what? Investment in continuing education. That, that's one thing. Um, we have our e learning platform on the FIVB site, and its main purpose is to continue referee education. Okay, I know it's a little. Uh, stop and start at the moment because of COVID, but nevertheless, that's the main function and it will be back again, I'm sure. Um, but we need to have passion, humility, confidence, integrity, all sorts of things. Uh, Susanna mentioned flexibility, okay? Trustworthiness, instinct, and so on. All of these things are things that you have to build in, okay? And to build them in, that requires time. That requires an investment by you in your own training and in the training by others of you. Okay, so, and, and you need to be able to referee a lot. You know, and one of the things that we, we, we noticed uh, was that many international referees really didn't get a chance to referee many international matches. That was, a, that was a big issue for us. And that's the reason why FIVB is trying to go in the direction of quality rather than quantity of referees. You know, give the chance to the top referees to referee more often, you know, because if you referee more often, you get a chance to maintain your level. If you don't referee often, your level goes up and down and up and down and up and down. You have to relearn things every time. And you have to therefore uh, understand that when people heap praise upon you, uh, oh, what a wonderful referee you are, uh, you're only as good as your last performance, you know, and you need to keep on doing that and doing that and doing that and, and, and keep on refereeing at that top level to keep, to keep that entertainment running. You know, that's what really counts. The knowledge of, of how you need to invest in time, in refereeing, in education, in discussions, and so on that's really an important thing so and i'm sure susanna you you, you mentioned already you do a lot of re re reading before you actually get a top level match is that correct yeah yeah that's true uh, and also uh, concerning one one thing that you said in in, in this particular slide um sometimes when we are to the to the international competition uh, we can notice that some of our international colleagues in their country they are only working as a first referee and not as second referee. And this is a big problem uh, because, of course, first referee is important, but also it's important second referee and also it's important line judges and the scorer and, 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 and all the roles. I mean, if you are not doing your job properly, then the teamwork is not working and then the game is not good. The performance of our uh, referee team is not working too. So you need also to invest uh, in your preparation as second referee, not only as first referee. And this is important from my yeah. point of view. Even more, uh, nowadays, for me, it's more difficult to be second referee than first referee. Mm. It's only yeah. my opinion. It's, it's, it's a good point that you make. And, and uh, I do remember in the World Championships, I, I, <laughs> I gave a nomination as second referee. Not, not to you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was others, uh, but but a, a referee who technically should have been first referee in a match. I gave him second referee because he was better at that particular role than the other guy, you know. Yeah. And and he would have provided more support, and he was able to handle the coaches better than the other mm -hmm. guy would have been. 
you know. Mm -hmm. so it, to, to me, you're right. It's absolutely important. You, you assign according to their, the person's ability and according to the difficulty of that particular role in the match. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. We agree. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Roy, next slide. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, uh, Susanna, can you talk us through what uh, URI is actually doing here that makes, oh, you've lost them, uh, that makes this important? Yeah, you know, uh, for me, URI uh, is one of the best referees around the world. So uh, it's one of my idols. <laughs> Sorry. But you can see his personality. He's completely confident about what happened in that moment. And he transmits this confidence to the team and the coaches. It's, it's unbelievable how easy he can do that. Hmm. You can see. Now, now what, what he did in, in this particular case was, the, I think, the, I think the, this was before we actually had coaches' tablets and so on. Yeah, so, it was before. It was before yeah, yeah. So, so there was a, a whistle. Yep. Uh, his whistle for service and the whistle by the second referee for, for timeout happened at the same time. So what he did was he, he switched from service signal to timeout signal. Uh, and to me, he created a, a pathway to a less difficult situation. If you see Thank what you. I mean. If, if, if he had continued the service uh, and the player had served and the other team had been walking across the court to go to the, the, the team bench, that would have created an issue that we would not have liked to see. And then, then you've got a protest, then you've got uh, all sorts of arguments and so on, and the referee is seen as a very bad person. But Uri, in this particular case, was able to, to understand the situation that if if he continued the service, we have a big problem. If he goes and converts that to a timeout, he has less of a problem. You know, so I, I know that's not exactly according to the rules, but in fact, it's the art of refereeing as we described before. Yeah, but this is common sense, as you said before. Take it easy. I mean, this situation with this decision create less problem than if he keep the decision to give the service. So. Yep. Okay, uh, next slide, Roy. So the question is, how does the excellent referee demonstrate all those qualities that we've been talking about? Okay, so let, let's let's summarize a few of the things we've already said, the, the, the takeaways from, from our earlier discussions. Relaxed, confident in the face of a difficult match. Signals, the mechanics are well-timed. Smooth, everything is smooth. Uh, we mentioned URI a moment ago. URI is particularly smooth. Um, anticipates, notices irregularities rather than simply reacting to them. So you deal with it before the action is, is a problem. Uh, so you're defusing everything before it happens. Okay, so next one, right? Okay, um, Susanna, this is Hernan and... Mm -hmm. We're before, right before, before we show it. Okay. All right. We're going to see. Oh, he stopped. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to say, uh, we're going to see uh, a ball hitting the net band. Okay. And Re Hernan Kazamakela is reacting to it. And there's a challenge. Okay. This is the era of the challenge. Now, this could happen at any level in any, any match around the world. It just so happens that we've got I hear that can help us with this. So, uh, Susanna, what is it that Hernan is doing that gives you an impression that he is on top of his game? Well, uh, you can see it several times. Yeah. Well. Hernan, yeah. You know, this is the, the action that uh, <laughs> any times happen. <laughs> Sandy appeared in our mind because we know the statistics said that 90% of time uh, probably is not four touches, but the block touched the, <laughs> the action. So maybe in that moment also, Hernan felt the, <laughs> the same. Um, because of that, maybe... Uh, but he gave, it, he gave it the right way. He, 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 yeah, his yeah. decision was correct. His decision yeah, yeah. was correct. But, but look at the facial expression. Yeah, you know? yeah. He has smile. Yeah, yeah. He knows. <laughs> he knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So 
So there's yeah, a huge uh, difference. Hernan is, Hernan is more expressive than um, maybe yeah. Plado or Uri, yeah. but uh, also he has a strong personality and... But it works for him, it really yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so for, for me that demonstrated that, that first of all he'd seen or yeah. you, as you said, maybe he understood all, all those things that I've said to him in the past. But, <laughs> um, yeah, but when, when, when the player approached him and he gave, he gave the smile. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> maybe yes, maybe not. <laughs> Let's see, no? Okay, but, but anyway, he was, he was confident, he was in control. Yeah. And yeah. that's the mark of a top level referee that they can do that and and uh, <laughs> um there, there was no problem but you're <laughs> right in fact about the fact that about 80 or 90 percent of those kind of balls do hit the block but again caution you can only demonstrate that if you've got hawkeye you know in a low level match uh, it's maybe not so easy to to actually apply that particular thing and get away with it but anyway Hernan knew exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, Roy. So, more on command. Uh, Susanna mentioned already about supporting your other colleagues. You've, you've got uh, four line judges, mostly in, 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 in international matches, and you've got a uh, second referee and a couple of scorers and a challenge referee. But you're in command of that team. And you've got to make sure that they are giving you all the support and continue to give you that support, even if you have to make a decision that, that goes against what they're saying. Um, but you're trying to facilitate the, the team's efforts. Okay, Ari Grass's main point about the whole challenge system is that we're trying to let the teams put the ball on the floor and decide it that way rather than a referee whistle at a strange time when nobody can understand what it, what it is about. So that, that's really the bottom line. Um, but in order to do that, the referees need to be smooth. And that means the mechanics have to be smooth and the understanding of that physics of the game must be smooth. We saw the physics demonstrated a moment ago when the ball hit off the block. Um, to realize that the ball rebounds in a particular way is important. You have to you have to think about that. Okay, if the ball hits a wall and the rebounds, okay, then then angle of incidence and angle of reflection are, are the same. But if the ball rebounds in a different direction, then it must have hit something to do that. You know, not 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 just the wall, it must have hit something else, some projection. And in our case, that would be the block. So uh, using that kind of knowledge can help the referee decision making. Even if the referee doesn't know that that's what they're doing, they have got this inbuilt uh, understanding of that this is how it has been in the past. I put that in my memory banks and it comes out automatically. Susanna, would you say that that's how you operate? Yeah, uh, especially when, when we have a long competition and we have the opportunity to have a meeting with the line judges and, and the scorer, it's important to give them some confidence also. It's important to, to show to them that we are a team and that we, we, we want and we, we are working to it together. And during the game, uh, let's say first, before the game, before we are going outside to the court, I like to not only me, I mean, many referees like to, to speak with the line judges and uh, to try to clarify some points or to show them what uh, we are expected from them. And of course, uh, uh, to show them that after it's rally, when the, the ball is landing on the floor or there is a fall, we are looking to you to get your information. And you are part of the team and you are important. And I will take or, or we will take in consideration your information for sure could happen that maybe the second referee or the first referee show, uh, she see a different thing and maybe we change the information that we receive from the, from the line judges, but they are important. And after each uh, decision, it's important to, to make a, a look or a, a signal with the finger, something that they know that they are part of the, of the, of the uh, referee team. And also it's important uh, the, the communication between the second and, and, and the scorer. Um, Sometimes the problem is that the second referee doesn't know very good how it's uh, working the score sheet the application and uh, it could be a difficult moment and maybe the second referee doesn't know clearly how to, to help the scorer in that moment. 
And, and sometimes in some countries also the, the, there is a big difficult, uh, difficulty, it's, it's the language. Uh, sometimes um, it's not so easy to explain the score and you can fix this problem, uh, this, uh, this way following this, I will do this, 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 because they, the language is uh, English is, is a little difficult for them. And in some countries also there is another problem. Maybe in the national competition they don't have, they don't have the opportunity to use uh, the electronic score sheet. And they are only applying the electronic score sheet in this particular international matches. So give them the enough time to fix the problem, the substitution, the timeout. Don't be in a hurry. Um, if you give them enough time, they will be uh, more confident also in their job. So it's, there are so many things important to, to, be in, uh, to, to have in consideration for that point. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned ball in, ball out earlier. One of the things that we tried to get you to do in the last couple of years is to make a direct decision making as a first referee mm -hmm. uh, and then confirm that with the line judge. How did you find that, that switch? Well, uh, <laughs> for them it's difficult now because they have to, to, to show how the ball is, is uh, the formation of the ball, the, the ball on, on the floor. But now, you know, with the Hawkeye, especially in FIVB competition, it's very easy. Really, the, the interpretation with the new technologies and the implementation of the cameras on the roof and so on, so they can see clearly one millimeter if it's ball in or out. Of course, the, humans, uh, the human eyes cannot see this ball one millimeter inside or outside. So I try if the, the lane judges cannot see uh, or cannot give us the, the, the right decision or the right information, uh, I try to be confident with this. I say, okay, no problem. You cannot see this. Continue with the next, with the next wall. It doesn't matter. What can we do? <laughs> we are not robots. No, we are not machines. That's right. Uh, yeah. Well, a good, a good command uh, theory there. Okay, Roy, next slide. So um, a, a lot of the things that we've been saying again appear again. Um, so in terms of game management, command, competition instinct, those, those titles in yellow, by the way, um, some of them appear in the R4 form, which is the evaluation form that FIVB uses for evaluating referee performance. Uh, so certainly game management does. Um, but We've, we've said it before and it just keeps coming back and we keep on repeating it that you have to apply the rules with common sense. You have to have a sense of natural justice so that uh, like the, the case that we mentioned with Uri before, if, if he had served, the, if he'd let the ball serve and the team had been walking off the court, that seems unfair. So that's not natural justice. So you need to have a natural justice and that's what he applied in that particular case. Um, but you understand the flow of the game requires the application of those rules in, in a, a very uh, controlled manner, you know, uh, in order to allow in, uh, the entertainment to flow, because that's what, we're, that's what we're doing. We are trying to maintain an entertainment event, not just a, not just a sporting event in a small venue with no spectators. Um, we're going to see in a, in a moment a little bit about takes good optical position. Um, and, and anticipation and we'll mention it again and we'll keep on mentioning it because it's so important in our game um, what, what we do is all about being aware of the flow of the game and what's going to happen so uh, Susanna if you can talk us through Mr Tano and his yeah. behaviour yeah you know uh, Mr Tano was really a fantastic second referee and he anticipates uh, so many times uh, to so many actions like we can see in, in this video he tried to to get the the right uh, optical position to know uh, exactly where is the ball and where is the crossing space to know if it is a fault or not but uh, anytime you know yes two three uh, steps behind to try also to protect him close to the post to try to avoid the the, the, the road to, to the players to uh, it's it's fantastic this is what we need <laughs> okay and good good footwork good anticipation good understanding of the game flow and so on and he kept his eyes on the ball at all times 
while still knowing where the players were. So uh, in, in, in many respects, he, he was doing absolutely everything right. So that, as you said, this is the mark of an excellent referee. Uh, somebody you would like to have as your second referee at any time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. What a pity he's retired. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, it's Mr. A, it's a pity, it's a pity, but he was very good as second referee. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Roy, next one. Okay, so. Um, right, so we've already mentioned what, what, what Tana was doing, focused on the net but, uh, and also on the centre line, but is aware of and was able and is able to whistle anything on the antenna, etc. Um, you know, he, he reacts to whistles, backcourt attacks, blocks, lever actions, which are faulty. Not every referee does this. Some referees are still only indicating to the first referee and asking the first referee to make such a decision. But if the ball hits the antenna on the R2 side, then they need to whistle that one too. Um, okay, so um, in terms of challenges, I, I know we're, we're, we're focusing a little bit on getting from good to excellent, but let's talk a little bit about excellent for a second. In terms of challenges, we are understanding, I think, a little bit more uh, how much the Hawkeye system can see. And what I did notice, and I hope it continues, uh, is that the number of challenges was diminishing. I don't know if, if that was something that you felt, Susanna, but mm -hmm. certainly the, at the last meeting that we had that Ari Grasa was, was involved in, he actually praised all the referees because of the, 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 the quality of their performances. Now, maybe that has something to do with the level of challenges going down. What do you think? Yeah, I think that, uh, of course, I mean, uh, the challenge system is a good system in order to, to, to be more, more and more fair in each, in each game. And um, because we are human, sometimes we commit a mistake and the human eye cannot see it's just, this is there. But it's true that many of the, the challenges that the teams request, it's in favor of the referees. So that means that the level of the performances is, is not so bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I it's still in progress. I mean, maybe still we can do it better and better this time. But it's true that sometimes it's because a ball touched the nail of uh, the finger. Oh, it's so difficult to see that. Yes. And maybe this is the main, the main mistakes that we commit now. Huh? But uh, in general, I think that uh, we are in a good level and still in progress, right? Yeah, good. Right, next slide, right? Now, judgment calls. Uh, these, these tend to be ball contacts uh, and it comes under again, command and control. Um, but in general, referees at the top level, they have an understanding of what the game is about now, that the game is about entertainment. And so they, they're not quite as strict in terms of ball touch as they used to be which is a good thing for the spectators because spectator number 15,000 at the top of the venue can't see a small movement of the hands. And as we discussed in our last meeting, when we see things in slow motion on TV uh, and close up, everything is a double or everything is a catch to some degree. So we have to apply this judgment call on every contact that the, that the players make with the ball. And the top referees will allow maybe a little bit more because they understand that the, the game is about entertainment. Um, that said, that said, um, the referee who does this is making a conscious decision. And therefore that does not, in my opinion, diminish the command aspect that we talked about, that the referee is still in command because the referee is making a, a conscious decision to allow or not allow. So Susanna, when you're making a call or not making a call, do you feel bad about not making it uh, or do you feel like okay i understood the situation uh okay um uh, you know we are we try to be part of the show and we try to follow the philosophy of keep the ball flying this is there and this is true but if we have to call one uh, ball handling fall it's because there is a fall so it's part of the game i'm not guilty of that <laughs> We try to mi minimize this, this kind of calls, yeah. that's true. The, the, the most important thing for me is to be consistent during the game. And this is important. Yeah, yeah. But 
keep the ball flying, give the, the public uh, on the on the venue to 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 enjoy the show. That's that's important too. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. That's good. No, I agree completely with what you said. And consistency is is really something that we talked about last week in terms of trust. If if the referee is consistent, then the players trust that this will continue, and therefore they can play. If yeah. the if the if the referee is inconsistent, then their players have no idea if they're going to do it right or wrong. Therefore nervous and if they get nervous they get angry and if they get angry they shout and so on so yeah keep them calm keep them calm <laughs> Roy next slide so um right in terms of positional play um again the reality is that we we are not so strict um we know that we need to call some positional faults if if they go too far, the question is how far is too far, um, and in fact, uh, probably um, the side to side movements are actually more of an issue for the teams um, because the spotters can actually see them from the back of the court, and that's where the video cameras are. Uh, so somebody moving in from the side and crossing at that point from a, let's say a, they're stacking in the front court, three people at the front of the net. Uh, if somebody's out of position there, the spotters, the, 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 uh, the statisticians will certainly see that. Whereas they might not be aware of a front to back uh, penetration that's going too quickly. I don't know, how do you feel, Susanna? As somebody, as I know, who is, is, is really on top of being a second referee, because I know you love being second referee. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm probably one of the <laughs> referees who whistle a lot of this kind of <laughs> fault. No, not a lot, but many. Uh, but I whistle the clear one and uh, when it's a big distance, when there is a big advantage from for for the players, then it's it's clear for everybody. Everybody can see this kind of fault. Then then you have to. But if there is a little movement, uh, it's not really an advantage. Keep, uh, keep it, leave it. I mean, uh, no need to, to whistle it. But it's difficult, especially in, in, in top level competition when the players are moving too fast. Where is yeah. the limit? Huh? Where yeah. is the limit? Yeah. But okay. when it's clear, it's happened with some teams, and we know the teams uh, who are doing this, this, this kind of falls. Uh, so be aware, that's all. Yeah. But penalize. Uh -huh. Go on. No, no, Go penalize the, the real one. I mean, but yeah. don't be too strict. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you're not you're not going to whistle at uh, match point. No, please <laughs> don't do this. Look to another side. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I remember way way back, um, and funnily enough, it, it was in Spain that, that that I saw this. One of one of a, a candidate referee. Um, he was on the course, international referee course, and he, he, he refereed a reasonable match. But all that people remembered was the three positional faults that he called one after the other. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you, said, as you said, you need to apply a little bit of common sense to those situations, you know. So. Yeah, so, sometimes, especially when the teams knows you, uh, if you make a look uh, to the players and say, hey, be careful with your eyes, Normally, they keep the position a little bit more and then <laughs> to avoid any conflict <laughs> sometimes, but <laughs> not always. Yeah. If you look at rugby, uh, the referees actually tell the players, they actually verbally say to the players, watch your position. Yeah. So that they don't go out of position and they don't commit a foul and, and create a penalty for themselves. So mm -hmm. it's interesting that we, that we uh, have have a, a different way of doing it. But yeah, the, the, the idea is to keep the game flowing. Yeah, so uh, again, uh, body language, uh, demonstrate you know the job of first referee or second referee. In case of the second referee movement, Susanna is an expert on the movement of the <laughs> second referee and, and how you, how you um, are aware of what's happening on the team bench as well as what's happening on the court. Uh, you're not doing uh, peripheral refereeing in the sense you're not you're not indicating or not attracting attention to yourself by um, talking to the players in the warm-up area and so on. So you're not doing that at, at important.
points of the game and so on. So really a bit of common sense and focusing on the most important part, which is what happens on the court, you know? So um, when you're talking to players uh, or to coaches, you're not submissive, but you're gentle. Would, would, that be a, uh, would that be a fair comment? You're polite. Yeah, I, I try to be polite all the time because I expect for them the same respect that I, I, I give I give it to them. So uh, it's it's a question of respect. Uh, you can say the things slowly, smoothly, naturally. Uh, you don't need to be pol uh, police girl or policeman <laughs> in that moment. Uh, just naturally. I mean, common sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. we we don't want to be protagonists. We we don't need to be protagonists even that. You know. And as we pointed out, the coach is not the, the centre of attraction, it's the players who exactly. are the centre of attraction. So the, exactly. the, coach, the coach needs to behave. But that said, that said, one of the one of the important things that the second referee needs to do these days, and you, you see it happening on, on the, the, the TV screens when there is challenge, is that if there's a challenge, you need to talk to the coach. Tell, tell me how you go about doing that, Susanna. Yeah, um, normally I repeat uh, the, the request that appears in the tablet. Did you ask uh, for block touch with my hands and also with my voice? Because sometimes they are French speakers and no English speaker and maybe they cannot understand what I'm saying. So I repeat with my, with my hands and they confirm yes or not, we want this or we want that, okay? And then I confirm to the chance referee, yeah, we need this small talk, but a small talk, this is not tell me and what kind of rally or oh, yes no yeah no i not no what do you want this okay this that's all you sounded like juhi when you said that what do you want <laughs> what do you want exactly <laughs> yeah. okay all right now um how do you as a second referee react now the, obviously the coach is behind you uh, or to the side of you and you know perfectly well that, that there are times in the match when the coach thinks he or she has seen something that you did not and they, they yell at you do you respond to that or do you ignore it completely <laughs> uh, okay i hear everything but it seems like i didn't hear <laughs> yeah. okay. because if i react to this uh, this moment and maybe this is uh, uh, against a decision of the first referee or something like this, maybe I'm uh, creating a conflict moment and sometimes you need to avoid that. But at the end of the action, maybe I turn to the coach and say, hey, please be calm. Okay, mm -hmm. I hear you, but you are not, you have not the right to complain in that moment or uh, do it uh, through your captain, but you cannot, uh, and he, if, if he's continuing with the protest, then I, I advise the first referee, hey, pay attention to the coach, this happened. So. All right, now, you've mentioned what I was going to ask next, which oh. is, you're now, first, you're now first referee, and you see this interaction between the second referee and the coach. Yeah. Okay. How are you preparing to react? What, what is going through your head at that moment and how do you finally resolve the situation if necessary? Uh, sometimes only with a look or a signal with my hands to the coach to say I can could be enough but if my second referee for me about a reaction a stronger reaction from the coach then I have to penalize him or I give a yellow card and a, a, a advice or it's depend on the situation. But of course, uh, we cannot permit uh, some, some kind of reaction uh, from the coaches, of course. Yeah, okay. it's depend on the moment of Good. the game, yeah. Okay, my, my last point on that slide was respect yourself and protect your colleagues. So I For think, sure. would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Of course, especially not only the second referee, but especially line judges or, or uh, escorted. And even if there is a jury member sitting behind, you, you have to protect, protect yeah. the, the jury members also because they, they have no cars to show to the coaches. So, yeah. Okay. Roy, next slide. Okay, here we've got uh, a, a situation where I think we saw it, saw it in the previous talk that we did, but it's worth seeing again. And this is anticipation and calmness under fire. So, Susanna? Yeah, uh, you are showing us video clips from my favorite referees all the time. So, it's very easy to learn from them. 
And Fabrizio, okay, uh, nowadays he's not any more active as referee, but uh, his style, his presence is fantastic. He knows what happened. There were a, a strong reaction from both, both teams, and to avoid any problem, he decided to, to, to uh, request challenge by, the, by his, himself. To avoid any problem. So it's, it's fantastic. I mean, you can do it. Why not? You can at any do it. time, at any yeah. time. You know, it doesn't have to be match point. Uh, it can be any time in the match, and you have command, you're in control. Uh, it's 17.21 at that particular moment. So it's an important point in the game for sure. But uh, it could have blown up and you can see the player's reaction. You know, they go, what, what happened? What happened? But Fabrizio, uh, the, the, Normally the reaction when the referee requests for challenge is fantastic from both teams. Mm. They said, okay, perfect. If the, yeah. the referee can do it, why not? And yeah. Really, the coaches, uh, sometimes when, when we finish the game, they came to us to shake hands with us and they, they tell us that uh, I really appreciate that the referees request for challenge. Why not? Especially in critical moments or in difficult moments when the speed of the ball is too fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, we, we need to, to, to try to avoid the, 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 the mistakes. And this is the system. That's right, yeah. Okay, next slide, Rai. All right, so we're still in terms of mechanics and people skills. We're controlling our areas of responsibility. We're moving smoothly. We uh, can move quickly. We saw this with Tano um, in order to control a difficult situation. Not moving robotically. We're not robots. We're natural movers. Should be anyway. Uh, gave management command to summarize decisions and discipline are made with confidence and common sense and applied at appropriate times. Um, okay, so that it doesn't impact on the match tempo or doesn't impact adversely or wrongly on uh, the flow of the game. So if a team is, is coming back and back and back and back and back to give them a red card at that particular moment destroys that momentum. So it's really important that we are aware of all of those things, you know, and that we, we apply everything fairly, calmly, and, and so on, so. Yeah, uh, for example, with, with the discipline, uh, if, we, if we need to show the cards, we will do for sure. Mm -hmm. But be careful at the end of the set, don't show red card at last uh, in, during the last point of the set because you are destroying the set. Give the players the chance to finish the game. So maybe it's better to show another thing, right? So this, these are things that you have to take in consideration also yeah. in this particular moment. Yeah. 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 It, it, it reminds me of, in fact, what could potentially have happened in Barcelona Olympics. Mm -hmm. When we had USA Japan, when the US player number eight, Samuelson, had received the yellow card. Uh, and then again at Japan, we're leading, I think it was 14 something. And uh, Samuelson did it again. Now, the referee didn't give a yellow card. Sorry, he did give a yellow card, give a second yellow card. Uh, which is not allowed, and uh, which was wrong, and therefore it caused everything to be overturned later. But if he had if he had expelled Samuelson, we would never have been discussing the situation at all. You know, so as you said, it, it's it's all about what options do I have, and what options can I use to make the game not better. You can't make the game better but you can, you can prevent it from exploding or you can, or you can prevent an unfairness from occurring, you yeah. know? So I think, I think that's something we need to be aware of. What, what are our tools? And use the appropriate tool at the appropriate time. And that's what an excellent referee does. Whereas a good referee or a beginner referee will apply what they think or what they've been told to do in their certain situation and don't yet have the ability to... Uh, Manipulate, not manipulate, that's the wrong word, uh, but to, to apply the rules in a common sense manner, which, which is going to be 
um, appropriate to the to the situation and to appropriate to the level of the game and to the point of the game without destroying it, as you said. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Roy, next one. So, um, <laughs> right, uh, some referees, I'm afraid, uh, will make a mistake. And therefore, you get the feeling that they're going to make a compensation fault, an event a fault against the other team, just because they know they got the first one wrong. So I got the first one wrong. Oh, I know I got it wrong. What can I do? Oh, I'll, I'll whistle this one as a double on the other team. You know, so <laughs> we've seen it and it shouldn't happen, but it does happen and we must avoid that at all costs. Uh, and we've said it before that sometimes a yellow card which is given because the team protests is because the referee made the mistake in the first place. Uh, okay, and any thoughts on that one, Susanna? Well, compensate is not a word that I have in my mind. So, no, no never. No, don't, don't, <laughs> never. Don't, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, no, no. Uh, Roy, next one. Right, so again, just, just to be summarizing some of this, maintain authority, but be calm. Keep control of you because you're the only person you can really control. Uh, you, you, you can sort of exert your authority on them, you can command, etc. But the only person you can really control is you, okay? So control your own behavior, control your face, control your body language, and be consistent with the application of all the rules that you're going to do, okay? Give that sense of fairness the players want referees to be fair okay it's, it's it's something that is very deep inside us we, we just need to have this uh, this feeling that we are being treated fairly and when we're unfairly treated we get angry um so if you do all that then you become a trusted referee and uh, you, you're delivering what we what we want and you're not going to be remembered for all the wrong reasons as the referee in charge of that match. In fact, it's better if nobody remembers who you were. You know, if you if you come down from the from the referee's chair and afterwards people say, who, who refereed that match? You know, if, if that's the situation, then you've obviously done a good job. <laughs> all right, okay, next one, Roy. Um, I'm going to ask Susanna to talk a little bit about challenge verification um, because managing a challenge is not always easy. We saw uh, Fabrizio dealing with a challenge situation even before it happened, which is good. Um, but have you ever had to reject a challenge, Susanna? Yeah, a few times, but I did, yeah, yeah, because they became or they, they arrived late. Or maybe they request something that's not on the menu, so it's it's impossible to check. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. And what would what would you do if um, they showed the right image but the wrong caption? You know, they say they show the right the correct image, but they say touch, and clearly there was no touch. What what do you do in those situations? <laughs> Well, no, normally I try, I try to speak with the, the chance referee in order to make a big zoom or magnifier, use a magnifier in order to, to, to see clearly what happened. If this is not possible and they put on the bigger screen a different image, uh, I try to explain to the captain that we check all the cameras on the, on the channel's booth. But unfortunately, they replay a different action that we check. Uh, but really, trust us. This is for all, we, we check it on, on, on the small, small uh, screen on the channel's booth. Um, only one time I think I overruled the, the channel's referee. It was a very difficult ball, very difficult ball. The ball touched this part of the finger, mm -hmm. this part. And uh, it was so difficult to see, but uh, it was clear that the, the muscle referee said no touch. Uh, but you know, uh, also the player was speaking with the team and say, yes, yes, I touch. And I said to the others, yes, yes, I touch. So they, they, they replay the action on the big screen and they say, no touch. I say, oh my goodness. Then one of the, the players, uh, of course, the loser, is starting to run from the bench <laughs> to, to my side almost. And I say, hey, hey, stop, stop. It was touch. So I overruled the decision of the challenge and nobody complained because it was so 
obvious that the player admit the mistake, right? Mm -hmm. But it was so difficult to see, really, it's so difficult to see. And yeah. I apologize that the challenge difference is so sorry, but I have to, <laughs> I have to, it was clear. Yeah. Yeah. Self-defense, okay. Yeah. Uh, next slide, right? I think we're going to cover some of some more things. So this 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 is effectively what Susanna was speaking about there. If there's some doubt, persist, which is what Susanna did there, because justice needs to be seen. And this 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 is this is really critical when we when we see things on the giant screen. Um, that uh, the if you're a challenge referee, for example, you need to select the image that's going to show and convince everybody in the in the venue that uh, this was the correct decision. You know, if you show an image that has some doubt, then you create the situation where you're going to get further protests and angry reactions. And if you understand um, the situation, if you're clear and you give clear directions to the challenge referee about what you need to see, then that, that works in your favour. You know, sometimes the challenge referee is, is going to show you uh, an image from the end camera, uh, whereas an image from the, the, the net camera might actually be better because it can show you, for example, in the case of Hernan, uh, the, four, the four touch situation, which, which uh, he clearly saw the ball had hit the block. But if you, if you see that from the end camera, it's not as clear as when you see it from the net camera because you see that the net actually moves a fantastic amount and you can see the rebound from the forearm of the player. So these, these things are really important to appreciate. So if you're a referee, you can actually ask, can I see that from the, the net camera? And maybe a little bit clearer, or can you look at it from the net camera? And, and if it's a more clear image, select that one, please. I can show that one. And then everybody will be understanding of what actually happened. Yeah, I agree, no. totally agree. And especially, Try to find the right camera, but also make zoom. Be sure about the call. Mm. If you have any doubt, you create more conflict. This is true. This is true. Okay. Uh, next slide, Rai. Okay. So finally, oh, we're getting to the end, Susanna. Uh, <laughs> uh, one, one former um, of the USA, John F. Kennedy said, we go to the moon not because it's easy, but because it's hard, okay? And one of the things that we do as referees is we do refereeing, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. And we like to challenge ourselves. The best referees want to do the best matches because they're challenging themselves against these top level teams and they know that they can perform and they know that they can deliver, okay? And that's where we are with sound decision making, very solid decision making. And that's something else, that little bit of extra that we've tried to talk about tonight that makes a good referee become an excellent referee. And really what you're doing is you're going to be the referee who has it, whatever it is. Okay, so onto the last slide. Okay, and there we see another image of a referee totally focused top level game and uh, a referee who has it, just like Susanna. Okay, so yeah. right, I'm, I'm, I'm finished from my side and uh, I'm going to pass it on to Susanna if you want to say anything. Yeah, well, uh, you cover all the points I think. And, well, you said knowledge, the application of rules, self-confidence, calm, consistent anticipation, body language, but especially common sense, yeah. Right. Okay, Roy, we are, we are done with our presentation. So if you have anything to add, leave it to you. Uh, first of all, I'm overwhelmed and uh, very, very uh, trying to, to accumulate and to, to process all this information. I have to say it was, it was very, very exciting and very uh, informative. Um, Try to say about my side, I think that if I can take it to analogy that of somebody who's driving, I mean, most of us, if not all of us are driving a car and, and the more you drive, the more natural it is to drive it. Meaning you do accelerate if you have uh, uh, shifts. So, so you naturally move the shifts or 
uh, turn, turns and everything, look at the camera, at the side uh, um, mirrors and everything. It's really all natural and you feel comfortable on driving. So when you feel comfortable, if there is something which you don't anticipate, or even you anticipate the, the light becoming red before time, or if there's a, uh, somebody who's walking on the sidewalk and is just about to cross, so you anticipate that. And if everything that you do is calm and natural to you, you can work all these things together, all this information together, and make a successful driving. I mean, arrive to your home or arrive to your location or any target without any uh, accidents or any other things unexpected that happen. And by taking this to, in my opinion, taking this to, to being a referee, so the more you referee, the more you have it in your system and it's more natural, you feel much more comfortable being up, up there on the bench or as a second referee to do your job and everything is almost comes out naturally. So when you have those specific difficult situations, um, you, are, you are ready for them already. You can anticipate them. And the more you have them by, by whistling, you can, you'll be less and less surprised once it happens and you'll, know, you'll be more uh, experienced to how to handle them eventually. This is my opinion, my short opinion for all this uh, presentation. I agree. <laughs> I agree, totally agree. So anyway, if anybody has uh, any questions that you would like to ask, you can open your microphones, please, or add anything to, your, to this conversation. Uh, we will be happy to, to listen. Uh, Gloria, you were, you were wanting okay. to say something. Good evening, everyone. Greetings from Spain. I have two questions, one for Sandy and one for Susana. The first one for Sandy Steele. Um, what strength, strong point would you highlight from Susanna? And the second question for Susanna is, Susanna, um, what aspect of your performance that you have modified, developed over the years, uh, you consider has been the hardest, the most difficult? Thank you. Okay, can I, can I do, it, do it a bit first then, since you asked my question first? Uh, Anna is the ultimate professional. Uh, everything that she does is uh, practiced um, and considered and thoughtful and smooth, but she has a strength inside and a strength which she projects, which maybe she doesn't know that she does it, but she does it. Um, so all of those things wrapped up together, uh, along with proper solid decision making, a knowledge of rules and regulations, but applied common sense, that's what makes Susanna, Susanna. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> I will invite you to one beer or two, I don't know. <laughs> well, Gloria, thank you. Uh, well, it has been a long process. This is nothing that you uh, open a border and then you get, you get uh, uh, all the knowledge that you have or all the experience. It's, it's a procedure that you get uh, after each, each game. And probably uh, to control the discipline in a game or to, to hand, or how to manage the ball handling during the game and be consistent is, is one of the, the most difficult things that they have to learn. And, and, and at the beginning, probably, I, I was like uh, Sandy said, I whistle one fall here, one fall here, and the other here, and, and, and that's, you know, the teams became crazy. What, what is really the level of the, of the falls? And probably this is the more, the more difficult things that they have to, to learn and to apply during, during the games. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anybody else with the questions, please? Oh, wake up and say something. <laughs> okay, I guess that uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Laszlo, oh, do you want to add anything to our meeting? Yes, it's possible. Uh, again, uh, let me congratulate Roy and, and Sandy uh, for this uh, great conversation, uh, including Susanna. I would like to add something. Uh, the main topic of this uh, conversation was what is the difference between how to go to ex uh, excellent referee from a good referee. So uh, let me refer to the Vlados video, the first video. 
I was uh, the technical delegate on this match, and after the match, we were discussing about this situation with Vlado. And Vlado told me that he intentionally requested the video challenge referee uh, to show the whole procedure mm -hmm. because he wanted to know if the ball really uh, hit the, the shoulder of the spiker. And this is the, the crucial point because for me, the excellent referee uh, want, doesn't want to show his, uh, his mistake because it was a mistake that, that, that both referees didn't realize this touch. But he uh, wanted to, to discover what really happened using the new technology. So uh, the excellent referee wants to really serve the teams it doesn't matter if uh, his or, or her mistake was, was really shown. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's, he or she is not afraid to show that he's a really human being with sometimes uh, with some mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this was only my... my yeah, Lasso, could I, could I add something? I, I remember when, when we started to use the channel system that some referees from some countries due to the, uh, their culture, their tradition, uh, for them it was so difficult to admit that they can uh, commit a mistake and this mistake can be shown on the big screen. And for them it was more difficult to adapt to the, this new system, the, new, the, the challenge system. But I agree with you, Laszlo. We commit mistake and we, are, we have these new technologies to take the right decision, to be fair with the teams, with the players, with the game. So this is really, really nice from Blado, I think, yeah. Uh, Sandy reminded us several times what uh, Ari Grassa want to do in volleyball. This is one of his uh, intention, using the new technology and with this improving the refereeing and improve, improving the volleyball. This is our this is our goal, and we are living in 2020. We need to use the new technology and sometimes to discover our mistake. What happened? The world didn't destroy. Mm -hmm. And Vlado, Vlado's respect uh, increased and not decreased yeah. using this, yeah. this uh, situation. Yeah. Okay. That's my yeah. point. Yeah, yeah I agree. Good point. Yeah. Good. So, so, let, so let me ask myself a question. I want to ask uh, Susanna, please. If you don't have the challenge system, let's say you are in a, in a local uh, competition, uh, some local match, how can you gain still the trust of the, the teams once uh, they, they think that there was a touch and you decided that it wasn't and pass through this kind of uh, discussion or maybe protest in, 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 a, in a positive way and not just uh, going into losing, losing the, the trust of the team or becoming a very uh, difficult situation. But, but we did it before we have the, the challenge system. So it's, it's the same, uh, we, you know, in my country, probably in your country, maybe in, in, in many of our countries, we don't have challenge system. We use the old system and keep the credibility of the referees. The, the teams knows the, the referees, who is Susanna, who is Roy, who is Avelino, uh, or Gloria, I don't know, and they trust them. Okay, they can make a protest because they think they, it was attached, but at the end you have your own personality and you can, you can keep your decision if you are sure, 100% sure about that, of course. So let's do it. We have the new technologies in, in top uh, competition, in international competition, but in our local or national competition, it still applies the, the old system. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. My, my question was to, to the referees who are not still international and not working maybe with the, with the challenge no, but, system. But Roy, you have to work uh, anytime the same. I mean, if there is no challenge system. If you have, okay, it's, it's, it's one tool more in favor of the referees to take the right decision. But uh, try to do it always thinking that you have, don't, don't have the, the, the challenge system with you. Try to do it. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, understood. Okay, anybody else before we wrap this, uh, this meeting up for this time?
I see that everybody received all their information and all the things together. Yeah, well, they all went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to thank you again, first of all, Susanna, for your time. I know that you are very busy. I understood that you are very busy at work and everything. And finally, I caught you. I had to bring the, the heavy guns as uh, Sandy to, to ask for you, but uh, it finally happened. So thank you very much for your uh, experience and your thoughts. It's, it was a very, very interesting uh, experience to listen to you. Sandy, as usual, and as always, it was very nice and very educative, well, well presented and everything. And uh, we, we are just working on more and more. So we are all gonna all stay tuned. Thank you very much for everybody to be with us. Stay safe. Hopefully soon, soon, everybody's coming back to the courts. Uh, warm up your engines and uh, let's hope that volleyball is coming back. So, okay. Have a good Thank night. Thank you, Roy. Thank, Thank you, Sandy. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Everybody. Bye. Bye.